What are the five fundamental concepts you should know about I2C? Well, here they are in under three minutes. Hey there, this is Kevin McEwen, and this is WCL Talks Tech. If you're new to this channel, this is where we cover smart product development beyond Arduino. Think ARM Cortex and RISC-V. We do quick three-minute videos that give you the basics on any topic, and we also do deep dives with full projects you could replicate at home or office. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Let's jump into the video. Okay, let's take a look at I2C, sometimes called TWI for two-wire interface. So essentially I2C allows integrated circuits on a printed circuit board to communicate. And sometimes these can be multiple microcontrollers or more commonly it's a single microcontroller that is communicating with various sensors. So for example, if I put a temp sensor here, this microcontroller wants to talk to the temperature sensor and the way it's gonna do that is over I2C. And I2C is basically two lines. There's a line called SDA and a line called SCL. SDA is our data line and is also how we do our addressing, which we'll discuss in a second. And SCL is the clock line, which determines the frequency of communication between the devices. Now, the thing to note with I2C, which is rather unique to its communication protocol, is that it does require pull-up resistors. So if I put a couple pull-up resistors here, um, I'm gonna tie them to 3.3 volts, and that's because these lines are normally just floating. They're not pulled low or high normally unless we're communicating. And when we are, typically the MCU will be the master and the temperature sensor or other sensors will be the slave. So when they're ready to communicate, they'll actually pull the line low and, and then whenever they want the line to be high, they just release the line and the pull-up resistors do the work of bringing it high. So let's let, take a look at how we communicate with um, various uh, multiple sensors. So let's say we have a second sensor here, and this is the humidity sensor. Essentially, we can just tie off these lines directly, like so and we are now able to communicate with the second sensor. And you might ask, well, how is that possible? Because we're basically connected um, on the same bus. And the way we do that is through an address. So for example, uh, the temperature sensor could be at 30 hex address and the humidity at 40 hex address. And what happens is when the master, uh, the microcontroller wants to communicate with say the humidity sensor, it puts out an address of 40 first the temperature sensor stays off the bus, doesn't listen to any of the communication, and only the communication goes to the humidity sensor. And of course, we can just continue to add more devices like this. And as long as we don't have multiple um, addresses that collide, we are golden. So the key thing to remember here is that as we add sensors, we only still have two lines or two pins used on the microcontroller, which is huge. The final point is that this is a half duplex communication, which means that we can only communicate, we can only transmit or receive, but we can't do them both at the same time. Ultimately, that's why it's referred to as half duplex.